good news for believers. The Apostle Paul, he has shown us, he has shown us that the law of the Spirit in Christ sets us apart from the law of sin and death. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. We who are in Christ, we believers, we have been saved, delivered from the condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Paul, he has used an illustration in a powerful way to compare we who are saved by the blood of Christ to those who are not saved. And he illustrates that non-believers themselves are enemies of God. You'll notice in Romans 8, 9a, it says in different, you know, has different words in different Bible translations. But in one it says, but you, begins with. And in the ESV, that's the one that I use. It says you, however, it means the same thing. The point is that Paul was focusing on the group of believers alone. He was expanding about that, that it's very important of those who are in Christ Jesus. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Now, in the second part of this verse, it starts with if. It's very important that we understand this word. Let's look at the verse. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Paul. He is saying that the Holy Spirit indwells all believers. All who have truly been born again have the Holy Spirit. All, all who trust in Jesus for salvation, all have the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greek, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And he works through believers and leads them to more holiness. Believers themselves, they are no longer enemies of God. They have been saved. Why? The Holy Spirit is in them. The Holy Spirit living inside us, God has called us believers to live live as if those who were dead and have been raised to life. Now we are alive to live righteous before God. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Do not live for sin. No. Our human spirit now is alive and it must rule over our bodies. There's a struggle, yes, there's a war, yes, but God will save us and take us to gloriousness in heaven. God right now is waiting for all believers to arrive there. And when we arrive there, we will experience, wow, the sweetest life ever and peace. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. Take time to think about, really consider the fullness of life and the freedom from sin, free from it. And we will have that. We have fellowship with God, praise God, for the glorious future that we are assured of. Pray that God will help you to make a goal to be more and more holy now. Recently, I said that our human spirit, our life, was connected with the Holy Spirit. We depend on the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us control our bodies. Now, are our bodies bad? No. Our bodies are dying. They're all getting old and dying. Will God get rid of our bodies? No. 
our bodies are dead, they will become new and glorified. Our new bodies will be there. Now, why must we now control, have control over our bodies? Well, it's because of the sin for nature inside of us that sticks to us. Sin, that's why. Our bodies will be free from sin that holds on to us. And that freedom from sin, it means freedom from death. That's why that our bodies will be made new. And no more getting old and dying. No more. I think that helps we who have health problems to think positive. Looking forward to the future. Wow. Our lives will be full in heaven. That's our assured hope. Coram Dio.